Hey, my little gluten-free licorice whips, it's Michelle Visage. Welcome to another episode of Whatcha Packin'. Today we are talking to the gorgeous Carrie Colby. Hello, hey girl, how you doing? It's Texas. Yes. <laughs> Dallas? Dallas indeed, mm. yes, little, little debutantes. Why'd you leave? Oh, why, why did I stay? Well, Dallas, and the reason I say that is you're a showgirl. Yes. Um, Dallas is the mecca. It is. Of drag performing. For sure. Showgirls. What made you, you know, this little kid in Dallas, showgirl, and she's ready to, to fly the coop to the big city, but Dallas <laughs> kind of is the big city. It is. It's like a big city with a small town energy, which is like good and bad, but for me, I just feel like it was a little too maybe not inclusive for me. So I was like, I need something a little more. I need, to, I need to find myself a little better. And I feel like I couldn't have done that there. How did you become a Colby? I have followed Sasha throughout her entire career from continental to current. We started running into each other when we both moved to Los Angeles. And that's when we started like talking. And she was like, you know, you're gorgeous. Do you have a house? And I was like, no, not at all. She's like, okay, well now you do. It was really simple, How but sweet it was really is that? gorgeous. Yeah. So when you came on the show, I said, well, you have, you know, big shoes to fill. You're talking sure. about Sasha Colby, who is, mm -hmm. you know, a legend and everybody kind of knows who she is and what she does and a showgirl and gorgeous. And, yes, oh my God. And you knew it. Yes. <laughs> but you were ready to prove it. I definitely felt like I had to like step up to that plate for sure. I felt like I was in the big leagues. <laughs> Cause you are. That is true. And how is Sasha responding? Sasha is so supportive. At first she like didn't know what happened to me. She's like, where did my daughter go? Where, where is she? <laughs> you know, and everyone's been keeping the secret. We've right. been, been concealing. And when she found out, she's like, oh my God. She was so proud of me. She actually was like brought to tears over it. And it was a really, really emotional time. Um, she's been so, so supportive and from there to now, it's just, we've, I feel like we've gotten closer. It's really I amazing. I love that. When you first started, you know, it was constantly, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. Yeah. And I know that sounds ridiculous, what I'm about to say, but I know that for the beauty queens, at some point, you're like, I want to hear more than I'm just beautiful. Of course. And we said to you, we want to see the ugly side. Right. <laughs> How did that make you feel? I, it was interesting. It felt kind of cathartic because for me, I don't know if everyone relates to this, but I feel like I didn't start beautiful. So it felt like I worked so hard to like have that as a crutch and then kind of tearing that down and going back to it, but learning like it's okay, you don't have to rely on this crutch because like that's exactly what it is. It was a whole like, I feel like I was in like my own like amazing therapy, really. RuPaul's Drag Race <laughs> is. It is therapy. Behavioral <laughs> therapy at its finest. It really it is. Forces you to deconstruct. Completely. All the way down and then rebuild. Yes. What was this like for you doing this? Being displaced from my home and growing up, you know, as 15, having to find myself, I identified so much when I first saw Drag Race. That was season five. So Alyssa Edwards, a Dallas queen. I was like, what in the world is this? Like, what am I watching? I'm captivated. If I could ever do this, I'd want to. And to be able to like go through time and like start my own journey of, you know, finding myself and transitioning and doing drag and all that, and then having this be a moment. I, I'm, hello, am, am I Jesus. here? <laughs> so let's talk about you being displaced from your home. Yeah. 15 years old. Yeah. What went on? So, I mean, my family's very, very devout Pentecostal. If people don't know what Pentecostal is, it's like a very, very uh, strict version of Christianity. So many things aren't okay. Is that a but... speaking in tongues kind of yes. church? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah. They 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 do the full the full semantics, and um, I never really fit in with that crowd. It's very um, do as you say, do as you're told, and people follow a very specific suit and I just never was into that type of a suit. You not falling into that yeah, was it, not okay. From the jump and then um, from a very early age, it started to be pretty obvious that I was a little different. Mm -hmm. and um, In the best way. Right, I loved it and a lot of people did but my family did find it to be concerning and as I got a little bit older, it started to become more and more of like a problem where it just got so toxic and, and, and really just not conducive to where it was like, you know what? We literally, and I feel like this should never be a conversation, but we couldn't coexist at all at, at 15. And I was like, I can't be here. Y'all don't want me. I gotta go. And they were like, get out. Oh, honey. Yeah. So what does a 15 year old do? They just go wherever they hear that the gays are. <laughs> so you couch surfed with people? I and... did. I it, it was a really complicated time because for a while I didn't understand uh, 
I was very, very naive to just how social situations work. So I couch surfed and I would try to like find friends that could take care of me and they were a lot older, but I didn't understand how things work. So it ended up becoming uh, very abusive. <laughs> and um, that was a struggle. I really went through it for about two years and um, I was staying, resting, sleeping uh, on a uh, train station and someone who happened to follow me on social media saw me and they were like, I recognize you from like, just like you post online. And I was like, oh yeah, no, I can't talk. Like I was so mortified because I had like all my bags of like my stuff and just my, my house, literally. Were you performing at this point? No, I was just trying to get to school and like do whatever I could So you do. were still in school at this point? I was, yeah, I was missing more classes than I should have, but I was trying to like get on the train, get to school and then and find feed a place yourself. to stay. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> How did you get out of that? So the friend that saw me at the station literally was like, well, I've seen you for a while online. I think you're amazing. Like, can I like help? And I was like, unless you can like help me not be like homeless, like you can't help. And they're like, well, I'd like to help with that. And they literally took me in and gave me safe haven until I was 18. It was really, like, I, it, it was a complete godsend. Honestly. That was your angel. Completely my angel. Like, I would not have made it. Because there were other kids in Dallas that had a similar situation, and, and I've seen what happened to them, and it was a disaster. So you turn 18, you get a job? I did. Well, I, I started getting jobs at 16. I was, I, I needed money, huh? Yep, yep. Yeah, so I, I had to get my coins up, but um, when I turned 18, I actually, that's when I was like, it was a lot of trauma and all that happening. I was like, I don't think Texas is for me. <laughs> now I get it. Yeah, you know, and it was just a lot. And even like, I was going out way before I was supposed to. Yes. So I got an idea of like, you know, that there's a gay culture and everything. But again, because it was that whole Southern vibe, sometimes I wasn't what people wanted and they made me feel a certain way about it. So I was like, I need to find a place where I can just be me and feel like I have an opportunity to really be successful and to be what I know I want to be, but I felt like I was set up to like fail at. <laughs> Do you have any relationship with your family now? I, it's really complicated. I'm someone that I don't hold grudges. So Good. I've never been that like, you know, like get to my family type vibe, but we're like acquaintances. I don't necessarily have like that respect, I guess you could say of like a parent child relationship. It's more of like, when we talk, we talk. But even still, um, they're not really very respectful of who I am. Um, and especially with me coming out as trans, that happened at the very beginning of the pandemic is when I like fully opened up about that journey. Um, that was like, I already was like on my way to hell. And that was like, now I'm like the devil's girlfriend. <laughs> I didn't know anything about this. Oh, you know, I didn't know <laughs> Surprise! about your life. <laughs> but I will tell you this. Yeah. You are where you're supposed to be. Thank you. You are with the people that love you. Absolutely. It's not, I'm not lit for this, but I want to give you a hug because Please. I feel like you need a mommy hug. Oh my gosh, I need a mom oh, in general. I need a mommy <laughs> hug. Yes. Oh. You have come through. I have, I've so pulled much. through. And you slayed it on this Thank season you. of Paul's Drag Race. Yeah, and that was what I feel like made it so hard for me to come out of my shell because just getting through all that, I was like, <gasps> babe, you've been through the worst of it. It's serious. The Paul's Drag Race ain't. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you did a True. great job. And and when you let us in, I can see now knowing you sitting yeah. here, I see why your defenses were up. Yeah. I can understand why you're guarded. Baby, you've been through a lot. A lot. <laughs> you're a remarkable. Lot. Thank you. You should be really proud of who you are and where you are and what you've become, the success that you've become. Oh my gosh. And that it's means only so much. just begun. Let's talk about these beautiful outfits. Yes. I mean, these are all very Carrie Colby. -y they are. <laughs> This is just beautiful Thank with this you. kind of deconstructed disco ball on it. Yes. Right I was really excited to, to bring this one because I had uh, collaborated with a designer. Who's the designer on that one? Shun Omaya. He makes these really amazing pieces from scratch. And we talked about making this beautiful moment. And then when I got to the place where we were staying, I was like, let me just add a little more drama to it. So I really was happy to show it because I was like, I actually put something together nice. Good girl. And I didn't get to show it, but 
Isn't it gorgeous? It's gorgeous. <laughs> and this, if this doesn't scream your name. Right, it's so loud. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so carry. Oh, it's also yeah. very RuPaul. It is. Yeah. Honestly, Ru was kind of like my inspiration when, when we were talking about making this look. If you can't tell, it's a tutu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doing a lot. Yeah. It was designed so when I walked the runway, it was gonna literally like touch both ends of it and be like really, really loud. But that was a really fun one, and I and I took a lot of inspiration from Mama Ru because I love, I've always loved her. Oh, her don't dresses. we all? Don't we Just, all? It's all to die for. Amazing, yeah. Yes. And this one? Oh my goodness, this was fun for me because so I feel fun. like the monster that you wanted to see would have been a lot more visible with this look because it was so like different for mm -hmm. me. I, you know, I might be pretty and and pussy and pink, but I'm also an alien. <laughs> you are very much so. Yes. I want you to keep pushing yourself. I'm going to. I want you to keep doing all of these things yes. that maybe Carrie Colby wouldn't normally do. She's gonna keep doing it. <laughs> you should. Absolutely. You've been through hell and back, kiddo. I have. And you're sitting here in front of me looking more in control of herself than ever before. Thank you. you killed it on RuPaul's Drag Race. You were so fun to watch grow. The minute you started letting us in, yeah. the minute it went, oh, there she is. It was is. like a switch, huh? <laughs> You've got so many people in your corner that love you. I'm one of them. You were fantastic. I love being able to see you, witness you, you judge you, all of the above. <laughs> Period. I, honestly, you judging me was one of my favorites because I, I love the critiques and just the way you do. I'm like, yes, read me. <laughs> <laughs> you kids are twisted, I swear. <laughs> love to Sasha. Yes, absolutely. And Carrie Colby, you are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you all for joining us. That was another episode of What You Pack In. I'll see you next time. Hey, it's Michelle Visage. Do you want gay shit? Check out RuPaul's Drag Race YouTube channel and hit subscribe.